In celebration of black poetry and the ongoing importance of African-American culture to Arkansas and the university, I would like to share a few books that show the connection between Arkansas and modernist black poets in America. Little Rock-born musician John Stubblefield had friends and admirers around the world. President Bill Clinton took a moment to visit his fellow saxophonists when Stubblefield was hospitalized after he was diagnosed with cancer, the illness that took his life in 2005. Stubblefield played with some of the most recognizable names in modern jazz, including Miles Davis, pianist McCoy Tyner, and Kenny Barron. Having begun his playing career with rock and roll and soul groups on 9th Street in Little Rock, Stubblefield will go on to cross boundaries and collaborate in all genres. He worked with the Avant Garde Collective, the Association for the Advancement of Creative Musicians, and recorded with Anthony Braxton, Lester Bowie, and others. He was also an accomplished composer, arranger, and band leader, leading the Memorial Charles Mingus Big Band. While working as a performer, studio musician, and music educator in Chicago and New York City, Silverfield befriended avant-garde artists, writers, and academics. He was also an avid reader with interest in jazz history and musicology, spirituality and religion, and black literature. His personal library donated to special collections along with the compositions, manuscripts, and recordings in his archives reflects the admiration of artists and writers who gave him examples of their own work. One remarkable such volume comes from Derek Walcott, the renowned Nobel laureate poet who inscribed a copy of his 1976 chapbook, Sea Grapes, to Stubblefield. A native of St. Lucia Island, Walcott traveled and worked around the world, including in Boston, where he was a professor of poetry, and in New York City for extended periods, where he no doubt crossed paths with Stubblefield. Walcott's poetry often vividly portrayed his Caribbean homeland and wrestled with themes such as the legacies of colonialism and the complexities of modern identity. Walcott was a visiting scholar at the University of Arkansas in 1985, and his 1987 collection, The Arkansas Testament, reflected the racial and cultural observations he made while in Fayetteville. Another collection of poetry given to Stubblefield now in special collections is from a much less well-known amateur writer but reflects the personal connection between Stubblefield and other creators, as well as the cultural context of their art. Philip A. Jenkins gave Stubblefield his 1987 poetry chapbook, Reflections and Recollections, while he wrote, which he wrote while living in his adopted home of Atlanta, Georgia, where he attended Morehouse College. Jenkins was a professional engineer for Lockheed Martin and taught Sunday school in addition to writing poetry. Jenkins inscribed the small chapbook to his, quote, best buddy ever. Originally from Little Rock, like Stubberfield, Jenkins' poetry reflects on the black experience through allusions to targeting and mistreatment by racist and corrupt police, among other themes, while sharing a strong Christian influence. In one poem titled Urban Crime Scene, Jenkins described being held up at gunpoint while on a date, before also being harassed by the police who responded to the crime. Quote, and don't be no hero boy for your woman here or she'll be a widow this time next year. Stubblefield also was a deeply spiritual person and his library included family Bibles, Christian books given to him from family and friends and several scholarly studies of the history of religion. A later edition in Stubblefield's library is a beautiful illustrated children's book edition of the poem, I Live in Music by the black feminist writer Intozaki Shange. This copy includes a deeply personal gift copy inscription. Quote, to John, in celebration of the music that brought us together, the blessings of your son, John, the child we might have had, and your beautiful soul, your love, Katie. Influenced by the black arts movement in the 1970s, Shange embraced jazz in her work alongside themes of liberation and self-direction. A celebrated playwright, this appropriate edition of her poem was illustrated by the abstract modernist painter Romari Bearden, who himself was a jazz songwriter, including having written uh, the jazz standard Sea Breeze. This illustration for the line, Saxophones Wet My Face, could be depicting John Stubblefield in the midst of an impassioned tenor sax solo. If you enjoyed these books once owned and cherished by John Stubblefield, I encourage you to explore his archives along with the other valuable manuscript and published resources on African-American culture and history preserved in special collections. Thanks very much.